Hi everyone, my name is Sophie and this is my service dog Mandy. She is a psychiatric service dog. So I guess to begin my story, thank you Mandy, um, around uh, I guess early 2019, um, a girl on my softball team thought it would be a funny joke because I was a, the only gay girl to accuse me of sexual assault. I ended up getting bullied for the entire rest of the year and being hospitalized at John, John Hopkins Medical Center because the stress of it ended up triggering a condition called chronic vestibular migraines. This condition causes me to lose blood flow to my brain, which can cause me to see things like little balls of light and get me extremely dizzy and sick to my stomach and also on occasion make me lose feeling in my legs so I cannot walk. It took roughly about a year before we started seeing people to get help for the condition. And not just like the condition, but you know, just to kind of figure out, you know, well, what else was going on. And so around December, I started seeing a psychiatrist and he diagnosed me with PTSD, diagnosed me also with extreme situational um, phobias, which tri triggered severe, um, social anxiety. These, these conditions were life altering and extremely debilitating. I could not go out in normal society without panicking or being able to just even go to the grocery store without having a panic attack or just any type of worrying. According to the doctors, my fear center of my brain, my amygdala, is stuck in overdrive which means I can't just feel a little bit of anxiety, it is stuck in a constant state of fear. Around December, after he diagnosed me, I started doing research on service dogs, and I one day just got up the nerve and said, Dr. Heffernan, do you think that maybe a service dog is the right choice for me? And he immediately said, yes, I think that if you were willing to stick with the training, that you could, could, be 100% better with a service dog. So it took about a month of fighting my parents to convince them to let me get a service dog because they thought you could only go through a program and program dogs cost $40,000. Finally in January, um, my psychiatrist talked to them and made them realize that you can owner train and they said yes. And I adopted Mandy and started training her and it has changed my life. It has completely and utterly changed my life. I train Mandy every single day. I've had her for five months now, and the tasks that she can perform are retrieving my medication from cabinets when I'm like, you know, not feeling well, that sort of stuff. She can do crowd control, which basically means circling around me to keep people kind of like at a distance away. She can also do anxiety alerts. So if I'm heavy breathing, she'll alert. If I'm crying and having a panic attack, she will go into deep pressure therapy. If I'm scratching from like an anxious from an anxious behavior, she will go and alert and get my hand away. If I'm doing any self harm attack like self harm attempts, she will stop me. And basically, just having that has given me the confidence to go out in public now and be able to, you know, live a normal life and function. Without Mandy, I could not live a normal life. She is my absolute life, and she will be starting college with me this August, and will be living in the dorms with me and coming everywhere. She is truly my lifeline. I need her in order to be able to function and not have panic attacks or freak out or just, you know, anything that could trigger, like, maybe a, a, a paralysis or just something like that. And, you know, without her, I could not function. So that's my story and that's Mandy's story. My name is Alexis and this is Piper Marie. She's a psychiatric service dog for autism and anxiety. Um, she's trained to interfere and redirect with my meltdowns, alert to various forms of repetitive movement such as stimming and self-harm, provides pressure therapy to my chest or my legs, and she is trained in various forms of crowd control, which includes blocking and orbit. 
and she truly is a godsend and I'm beyond grateful that she helps my disability the way that she does because it allows me to experience independence and a sense of normalcy. I truly believe that because of her and my amazing support system, my life has changed for the better. It feels like the rainbow at the end of a 20 plus year long storm and it finally feels like all of the years of bullying and harassment and self-hatred are finally paying off. And yeah, that's what she does for me. She, she helps me be more neurotypical. And it's a great feeling to go to the grocery store by myself. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> My name is Natalia Richter. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my service dog Willow right here. Um, she is a rescue from Houston, Texas. She's two years old and she's in the process of becoming my service dog. So she's still in training and she's very really healthy. Um, so I have fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, edit that part, is when um, your mom drinks while she's pregnant and birth defects on the drinking part, and that's how I have fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, Willow is my service dog for multiple reasons. Um, she helps me with anxiety. Uh, she alerts to it, so when I'm, you know, wringing my hands, she'll bump her nose towards mine, well, towards my hands. Um, the other one is uh, deep pressure, what she's doing right now for anxiety, because I'm not very good at doing videos. Um, uh, blocking is another one that I use. Uh, because so, I get startled a lot and she'll just come up behind me and she'll just stand there behind me and walk so other people don't come up. Uh, the other one is alcohol. Um, she sniffs out alcohol because I can't have any alcohol in my system. Um, and she'll just bump the bottom of the glass with her nose to let me know that there is alcohol and that I can't drink. It's been easier having a service dog. My anxiety is under control whenever she's around. When I get anxious at stores, she'll give me deep pressure. So it's very helpful that she's doing right now. That's it, folks.
What is it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Come here, come here. Good job. Yes. Can you show me? What is it? Yes. Yes, come here. Come here. Can you show me? Can you pop? Good job. Hi everyone, my name is Megan. This is Belle, she's my little border collie. And this is my service dog, Loki. He's a six-year-old German Shepherd. Um, Loki here is the one that we're gonna be talking about. He is a mobility service dog. So mobility means that people normally have issues with um, their legs or with being able to move around, so being mobile. And I am one of those people, my knees are very bad. So. Loki's tasks include a forward momentum pull, which means he does pull in his harness, and it just helps take some of the pressure off my knees when we're walking. Um, he also provides bracing for me, so bracing is he will stand on all four paws and he'll tighten up all of his muscles, and I can use his shoulders then as a rock-solid bracing point. And he also uh, will pick up items that I drop on the floor, because bending down to pick things up and squatting down um, just isn't really an option for me um, if I want to get back up and continue walking. So those are some things he does for me. Um, some ways that he makes my life a lot easier are whenever there's a ramp or some stairs. Um, his pulling is amazingly helpful and I wouldn't be able to go up and down them without him, um, at least without a substantial amount of pain. Um, he also helps because picking things up off the floor, again, is not easy for me. It takes a lot out of me. And uh, he, he helps me to have enough endurance to keep going through whatever I need to do. There were other options for me. Uh, we could have gone with a cane, a wheelchair, some, um, some crutches, but with as active as I wanted to be, my doctor and I both decided that a service dog was going to be the best option for me so I could still have the amount of freedom that I wanted to have and that I need to have in my life right now. So we, we opted to, to go for a service dog. Daddy? Good girl. Uh, we opted to go for a service dog instead of some of the other means of um, negotiating through and navigating through my disability. Um, okay, bye, Betty. <laughs> and um, so Loki was adopted from a shelter at a year and a half old. He was not intended to be my service dog. He was originally supposed to just be a pet. And as my health and my knees deteriorated, um, that's when my doctor and I started talking about the option of having a service dog. And whenever I first got him, he had some uh, less than desirable habits and traits um, from his situation before he was um, starved and uh, he was abused and beaten um, and so he mentally he was not in a good place but um, through working with him a lot in obedience 
and just uh, spending some time with him, playing with him. We worked through all of his prior issues and he turned out to have such a sweet disposition and such a wonderful personality um, that I took him to a trainer and they gave him the green light and said absolutely he would make a wonderful service dog. And we began our training. And he was officially in service at about three years old. And I've been working with him now for about three years. And he goes with me literally everywhere. And he makes my life so much easier than having, you know, crutches or um, needing to use a wheelchair part time. I just, I, I didn't see those as options for myself. And uh, Loki helps me to stay as active as I possibly can. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Sarah. I have been a service dog handler since kindergarten. I was born four and a half months premature. Because of this my lungs were not fully developed and I was placed on a ventilator. I have severe photographic memory and when I was in the NICU I heard and eventually saw things happen that I will never forget. These things cause PTSD meaning certain sounds or things can startle me and make me think and feel like I am back where the trauma occurred. I also have some mobility issues because my joints were not developed enough. This means that on some days my legs cannot easily support my weight and I use a wheelchair to help me get around. I am able to stand up even on bad days if I have something to support myself on. Just because I can stand doesn't mean that I don't need a wheelchair or that I am faking my disability. I can also sometimes have seizures. The seizures have recently gotten much worse because I have developed an intolerance to the medication I used to have that would prevent the seizures. Because of all of these disabilities I have a service dog. My dog helps me know when I'm about to have a seizure so that I can lay down to prevent injury. She also helps bring me back to reality when I start to go into an episode of PTSD. She is a larger breed of dog which makes her big enough to help me stand up and pull my wheelchair on bad days or carry bags and open doors for me on good days. My service dog is a dog and can have lots of fun when she isn't working, but she's also medical equipment. This means I need her for me to be able to do everyday things that you wouldn't have a second thought about. When you are trying to pet her, or you are talking to her it is the same as talking to an oxygen tank, you would never talk to a wheelchair or oxygen tank so please don't talk to my service dog. When I'm in a pet friendly place, and we are playing together, you can ask me if you can pet her or take a photo because, at that time she's just a dog. When she has her vest on and is working you absolutely cannot distract her. If she is distracted she could forget to tell me I am going to have a seizure and collapse. If she forgets, I could fall on the ground and badly injure myself. If I get injured because you distracted my medical equipment you could actually go to jail. I totally understand that dogs are adorable and that they are even more adorable when they are in an uncommon place but please for our safety, do not distract a service dog.